I love exploring historic and prehistoric sites whenever I'm out and around in the UK or anywhere in the world actually. But here in the UK, one of the easiest ways to identify them and paths to get there is to use an OS map or the OS map app or OS maps online. Uh, I'll drop links below. I'm just using uh, OS maps online to look at uh, more detail about where I'm going today for a stroll. I mean, this, this is where I'm heading, but look, there's so much history and prehistory, so many uh, sites around here. It's absolutely awesome. Ready for today's adventure, Brie? Okay, go the other way. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. Squash. Squash. Come on. Hi, this is the Avon Esketin in Gwynedd, Wales. This short spate river runs all the way from its source up in the Red Oak Mountains to the sea, entirely within the bounds of Snowdonia National Park. Today I've brought Breed of the Adventure Dog with me for her first appearance on my YouTube channel. I call her Breed of the Adventure Dog, but only sometimes, uh, sometimes the language can be a bit more colourful. But she's beautiful, a little hunt away pup. Come on, sweet pea. Every time I pass this tyre, I wonder what sort of truck it came off. Okay, it's Breeder's first time seeing a swing. The, the new breed of stair climbing Land Rover, maybe. Kids' Den or Bushcrafters Debris Shelter? She's off. Ready, come. Come on. I've got the little orange harness on just so that it makes it easier for, for me to see her when she's dashing around the woodlands. Come on. There are quite a few pretty cool looking pools on this uh, little spate river. I bet they hold some nice and interesting wild brown trout. So um, as a keen fisherman, I think I'll, uh, I'll do some research and find out how I can fish this water. When I say I'm a keen fisherman, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm a good fisherman. I just like going fishing. It's quite an incline here. So uh, I don't know if you can see the stairs going up. I trained legs yesterday, quite a heavy session. This is gonna make the glutes ache. Oh well, crack on. Come on, Bray. A well-placed bench at the top of the hill. The pack that I'm using today is the Camera SF Sabre 30, a 30 litre one main compartment day pack. Now one of the benefits of the Sabre 30 is that it's got a cool mesh back system. So on days like today where it's going to be hot and sticky, it increases the airflow between your back and your pack, which makes it a far more comfortable carry. Just lifted a tick off of Breeder's head. Um, luckily, it was just sat on the on the fair on the outside. I detest ticks. I kind of, I've got to admit, I do have a problem with them. So I always use tick deterrent. Um, I'll drop a link to the one I use below. Uh, if you use anything different, please let me know. I hate them. Part of the reason that I don't like ticks so much is uh, on my shoot down in Devon. Five guys came down with uh, Lyme disease and um, out of those five, three were really ill, kind of life-threatening stuff. And, uh, and you never know, you know, which tick's got it, which tick hasn't. So be aware, be aware of limes, be aware of the signs and symptoms, uh, carry the right tools, and, um, and always seek medical advice if you're not sure. That was kind of an interesting caveat, didn't it? Terms and conditions apply. And we're back on tarmac. If we go this way, 
it kind of hooks around towards Pont Skethin, uh, a very old, I think medieval, but I could be wrong, probably am, a uh, single stone arch bridge, which was once on the, the important trading route between Harlech and London. But we're going that way to look at some really old stuff. Which way? Which way? Come on then. Yay! <laughs> oh no, getting mugged for the camera. There's actually a footpath marked going through there somewhere. That lovely tick infested fern jungle. Awesome. Just up there behind me is an old Iron Age hill fort. But I suppose all Iron Age hill forts are, are, are pretty old really. But um, Iron Age hill fort up there, it's around 350 meters above sea level. I'll show you the views in a second. It was then later apparently inhabited by the Romans. I'm not sure whether that's fact or kind of local myth and legend. I've not looked into it yet. But, uh, but with kind of with views like this, I'd imagine it's pretty prime premium priced property back in its day, but a bit drafty now. I stop for 30 seconds to make a video and you lie down. Bree, come on let's go. Bree, come. Come on. Good girl. Check out these views. We're just approaching what I came up to see, but whenever I come up here, I can't help but pause to admire the views. You know, you've got the sea one side and the Rinog Mountains behind me. This place is awesome. And lots of hawthorn flies today. They're quite beautiful in themselves. And this is what I came up to see. It may not look like much right now, but this is what remains of a chambered long cairn, a burial chamber from the early Neolithic period, which puts it around 4,000 years BC, so around 6,000 years ago. And it's still almost standing. I wonder what our kind of constructions will look like in 6,000 years time. The chamber here was around 28 meters long and, and uh, 10 meters wide. And from what I can gather, it's believed that it was around a metre to, to kind of 1.3 metres high. Cairn is aligned roughly west-southwest to east-northeast, which brings me on to the question of whether or not 6,000-year-old burial chambers like this can give us clues in navigation. When I was doing some online research into this place before I came up here, uh, I found a website. Um, I can't remember what it was called, and even if I could, I probably wouldn't tell you. But uh, on this website people have been here and wild camped which is kind of understandable it's uh, I guess a pretty cool thing to do to sleep in a burial chamber maybe um, but then they've left reviews on what the, what the stay was like and one guy complained that the room service was atrocious <laughs> it's uh, each to their own I suppose known a bit of a, an urban navigation myth if you like that the orientation of churches and graves can give us clues as to the cardinal points of a compass now there are quite a lot of caveats involved with what I'm about to say so I'll keep it brief and simple simple because that suits me and brief because it suits you most churches in the UK will follow an approximate east-west orientation Graves in particular, again with lots of caveats, usually follow an east-west alignment with the feet being placed at the eastern end. However, whether burying people or building churches, how did early, early as in PC, pre-compass, masons and gravediggers know which was east and which was west? So I'm guessing the answer that you're now shouting at the screen is the obvious one, which is that they use the sun as it sets and as it rises. And you'd be right. And that also explains why 6,000 year old burial chambers like this don't always align with due east and due west. In fact, they rarely do. And why they don't align with each other. One of the best known prehistoric sites in the UK is Stonehenge. Stonehenge is positioned at roughly 51 degrees north. 
at Stonehenge at the time of the winter solstice. The sun rises roughly 40 degrees south of due east. But at the time of the summer solstice, the sun rises at 40 degrees north of due east. So that being the case, when these burial chambers were being built around 6,000 years ago, there was quite a big variance in alignment. So to answer the question that I started this video with, can 6,000 year old burial chambers like this help us with navigation? Well, I guess if you were really stuck, burial chambers, graves, churches, they can all give you clues and help to build up a picture, but you'd need a lot more clues to be accurate. Whenever I'm navigating or trying to ascertain my, my location, my position, I always look for at least three points of validation from three different sources. Obviously, another great way to navigate a really good clue is always remember to carry a compass. I have to admit, I never thought I'd be sat in a burial chamber with my dog. She seems pretty cool with it. I don't think she knows what it is. Although she was digging just now. Hopefully there are no bones. Right, we're going to get out of this burial chamber and head home. Be good, be brilliant, be awesome. And remember, if I can help you in any way, get in touch. Let's have a conversation and make good stuff happen.